Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight or wherever you are in the world. It is 8 p.m. Eastern. Joanna, you're 8 p.m. Eastern too, yeah? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are. So Joanna <laughs> Rogester is joining us from Canada. I am currently in the U.S. And um, before I go into my intro spiel, I just want to share with everyone how excited I am to have Joanna on the show because mm -hmm. Joanna is, she does so much work on the back end of <laughs> Spirit <laughs> and Power and she has her own show. And, you know, she and I are very frequently in contact, but we've never done a show together. So yeah. I'm super excited about this. Yeah, so am I. Thanks for having me, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks for being here, honey. Um, <laughs> so before we get into our topic, I wanted to mention that uh, Speak Up and Empower is an online community of people who envision more for this world. We are a community of experts and members of all colors, sexual orientations, religions, and cultures with a common goal and a shared voice. So once again, thank you all for being here. I'm Sarah Gallardo, the founder and executive director of Sarah Speaks Up for Domestic Violence Awareness and the author of Hiding in Plain Sight. And that's all on Amazon. Um, <laughs> So I, as I said, this is Joanna Rogester. She is known as the soul alchemist and she is very wise. She is very kind <laughs> and I am so happy to have her here um, to talk about the masculine and feminine in all different relationships. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sarah. Yeah, we have um, been on lots of different shows, but never just uh, the two of us together. So um, it's exciting. Uh, and thanks for calling me wise. <laughs> you totally are. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. I don't make these things up. I just point. Them all right. All right. <laughs> so um, alchemy is just all about um, transforming yourself, going from your story to your truth, and that's what um, I help people with the most. And but part of your truth is the masculine and feminine. We're not talking male or female here. We're talking in the iconic characteristics of masculine and feminine. Like masculine is, you know, the take charge attitude, go out and get it done, you know, be strong and all those things. Whereas then the vice versa, the female is go with the flow, be in the, be the you know, those maternal caring instincts, being um, emotional and sharing and along those lines. And so, um, but having a, a balance inside of you, um, it will allow your relationships to function at a higher level and will allow, you know, your work to allow you to function at a higher level. And I'm not saying you can't be more feminine sometimes and you can't be more masculine in your day to day life. But that true balance inside of you really is, is a beautiful place to be. And then and when you're there you can then you automatically without having to do the work, you'll affect those around you. So Sarah, do you consider yourself um, more feminine in your characteristics or do you tend to be a little bit more masculine? I have typically been known to be more masculine. Um, you know, I, I do, I, I've noticed myself shift right and so everybody is growing and changing and experiencing life over time and so i think these parts of ourselves might you know bend and shift um oh hi penny hi um, <laughs> we've got someone commenting over here but so we um as a domestic violence survivor i have found that there's a part of me that is always in protect mode mm -hmm. and yeah. because there's a part of me that has been so egregiously wounded uh you know emotional and spiritual abuse in addition to just you know financial and physical and all the other kinds but still um you know i'm constantly on guard and so for me, I found that, especially in the past, I was, I was starting relationships with this wall up. And I really was, you know, of the mindset that nobody else is going to protect me. So yeah. I have to protect myself. And mm -hmm. I think what that did 
was it definitely created the space. I think people were very aware of my boundaries and they were very aware of, you know, that was no mystery. <laughs> this was not <laughs> something that people were guessing at. But yeah. I think what it also did was it kept certain people away. You know, and so we can talk about the positives and the negatives of having, you know, more of a masculine uh, approach to life. However, um, you know, about two years ago, and I'm talking publicly about this more and more as as I heal over time. But uh, two years ago, I went through something extremely difficult. And um, through the healing process, I found that I had no choice but to be to stand more in the feminine because mm. allowing vulnerability admitting my they're not failures they they weren't failures admitting my um in times when i was maybe even weak um or specifically not strong and looking at relationships, realizing that I can't be this curled up armadillo for the rest of my life and expect relationships to flourish. And I myself couldn't flourish uh, for that reason. And so I think it took that experience in my life for me to realize that being always on guard and always closed off it was not serving me and and the people around me yeah it's a challenge right and there, there's no right or wrong here with whether or not you're in your masculine and your feminine it's just whether or not it, it's working within you because you know throughout um so now i'm a i'm a intuitive life coach um a speaker a homeopath and nutritionist but i spent 20 years in the corporate financial world and in that world and, and also in my marriage too I, I spent it very much in in my masculine side right like i, I had to be you know you go to work you got to get things done yeah. it was about relationships but it was also very very much goal goal oriented right and financial goal oriented in my in my marriage um, because I was the one that took care of the kids and did so much because he was working all the time. Um, anyways, that's another discussion. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I had to be very masculine in that role, right? Like get it done. And yeah. so, um, you know, it's, it's what at the time it was working. Uh, it, it, it's well, it, it allowed me to exist, right? It allowed me to survive. So sometimes you have to be in one or the other. But I, I think ideally, if you can move back towards and, um, you know, that balance, that's when you start to, you know, come more into yourself. But often what can happen is that if you had become very feminine, or had, you know, become very masculine, it's almost like in order to come back to balance, you almost swing more to the other side before you can come back. Kind of like a pendulum, life. right? Yeah, in order, in order to get to center, you're going to have to do a little feeling yeah. either way. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's um, it's just a, a very beautiful game to play and very, and very much about what I work with my clients is to be that observer in your life so that you can be in the moment and you can observe what you're doing and what other people are doing. And when you can, you know, step back and be that pers third person watching, you come to understand yourself better. You come to see all sides of you and ideally come to love all sides of you, whether it's masculine or feminine or, you know, if you're judging yourself that you're too masculine or too feminine, but come back to loving all those pieces of you, then that's when, you know, that's when the magic really starts to happen. But it, it's always a journey. And I don't think anyone is, you know, right in the middle at any point in time. But um, if you think about the relationships that you've had in the past, so I, I mentioned that I became more masculine. So what I saw with my my ex was that he was becoming more feminine, right? As much as he was at work and, you know, going forward, like, you know, 
I didn't see him at work, obviously, but when he was at home, he was more, I didn't want to go out and see people. He just wanted to be at home. Right. And it, um, I was taking charge and doing all the stuff. So it was, I would have loved to have seen if I had become aware at the time as I came back to balance, if how he would have come back to balance. But if you think of some of the relationships of some of people around you and it, this doesn't matter if it's male, female, female, male, 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 female, female, like it, or anything else. Um, you know, if I, if I asked you to think about a relationship that you were close to, can you see how one person is more masculine, one more feminine? And how does that affect the relationship? You know, it's interesting because, um, you know, I'm thinking of my current relationship and I'm thinking about, uh, you know, his tendencies and my tendencies. And we have found this very nice balance okay. where his, you know, he likes to work on cars and he likes high performance vehicles. He's a fix it guy. He's an IT guy, you know, and, and for me, I bring in, in my opinion, a lot of the uh, feminine with my cooking and my caretaking, um, you know, checking in and being supportive. But at the same time, you know, he also has his moments where when he needs to um, isolate and withdraw because that's how he self soothes. And, mm. you know, I am more of a, let's meet this head on. Let's, you know, get to the, let's get to the fix and how do we push past this or move forward? Um, and so I think it's interesting how in different relationships I've noticed, just like you, you were talking about Joanna, um, how your own masculine and feminine shifts to balance out with the person that yeah. you are in a relationship. And this isn't necessarily romantic relationships either. No. It, mm -hmm. Like for example, my daughter and you know my sisters or whoever friends in your life, coworkers, um, and and this this isn't to say that you know my my boyfriend is effeminate. You know mm -hmm. that's we you know we're talking more about how um, and to Joanna, I'm really I'm really glad that you brought this up because you're talking about our relationships with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And you said a lot of great things about loving yourself and like in the space where we are right now today, loving yourself. What does that look like? What does that sound like? What does that feel like? Um, a lot of the people that I work with, um, that is a big challenge, you know, especially in after surviving abuse, mm -hmm. the kind of thing where, where, we, we have, we doubt ourselves, you know, we have this record playing in our mind of you're not good enough. You're not worthy. You'll never be happy. And you know, you're this, you're that, da, da, da. Um, so sort of rewinding or even erasing that negative self-talk can do a lot of damage with one's self-worth and self-love. Yeah. So, so, and, and you're talking about, I think, what do you think, Joanna? Um, do you think self-love is more of a feminine kind mm. of, or is that yeah. just, that's universal, right? That's human. That, that's universal. Yeah. yeah. It, and I think women are more comfortable talking about it and more comfortable considering it. Um, but I know like on the very first time, um, someone said to me, you know, in that um, it was a natural therapy session that I was having with someone, something I was trying out. And she, she said, you love yourself. And I, I burst into tears. I'd never even thought of it before. And you're talking like I was in my early forties. <laughs> so, um, and I, I didn't, right. I didn't love myself. So um, no self-love, God, it's, it's the most important thing in your life. You know, I was had a client today and we were talking about it, right? It always has to come back to loving yourself. And if you can love yourself, then you can love other people again, right? If you trust yourself, you can trust other people again. If you can see the good in you, then you can see the good in others, right? But um, so often 
whether that you've experienced, you know, a, a trauma, right, of, of abuse in whatever form it was, or, you know, whatever it is, we judge ourselves that at some level it was our fault, right? And it would be so wonderful pe for people to be able to love themselves and, and get past that. Yes, there's, you know, it's one of those things. We always play a, a role. Like there's, it's, there's always our own behavior to be looked at, but, but not, not to judge ourselves on, right? And, and I think that's what so often happens. People, you know, in hindsight, right? Looking back, I can see, oh, I should have done that differently, or I should have done that differently, or that was my fault. Well, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but it doesn't do you any good. The only thing that we can do looking back and to say, can I do things differently going forward? Can I do things better? Well, I don't even like that word better. Can I be a best, like, uh, the best version of myself going forward. Can I love myself more going forward? And if you're working on that, then that that's kind of the be all and the end all, right? That's what all this self-help, self-guru, self-awakening is all about, right? Learning to love you and to see you as a as that you do deserve. I don't like the expression to be enough because to me it's always like, well, I don't want to be enough. I'm already enough, <laughs> right? But it, sometimes if you're starting through that process, sometimes being enough is enough. But um, yeah, because you can get into like that inner child that never thinks she deserves or he deserves. And I work with that inner child all the time. And that's a, always an amazing exercise to go through with people to connect with the inner child that's been stuck or left behind. But no, and inside of all of us, yeah, it's universal to love yourself. And um, it, it's a it's a challenge for all of us. I, I'm I'll ask you where you're at in a minute, but I would say that like I'm constantly working on it, and I'm constantly like it's it's always if I'm you know connecting with my higher self or prayer, like whatever you want to call it, right? It's always love yourself more, and that can be challenging because I think, well, how do I love myself more, right? But that's that's kind of a work in process. So Sarah, if someone asked you, I'm going to put you on the spot here, do you love yourself? How do you respond? I do love myself. Yay! Now. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Always. I didn't always. And this is something that I try to stress with, you know, with the people that I work with. And, you know, once again, just not to not to continue bringing up this subject, but it's, you know, the, the people that I work with are survivors. And um, usually, if not always, at some point when you're being emotionally abused, um, you're told it's your fault. Mm -hmm. You're blamed for things that couldn't actually possibly even be your fault, but going through the process of gaslighting when someone is is essentially mucking with your perception of reality and convincing you that you know this is your fault and and that untruths are actually true, it skews your your lens and the way you see life and mm -hmm. and other people and most importantly the way that you see yourself and i had to work really hard at forgiving myself mm -hmm. for all the ways that i had beat up on myself and now what i tell uh my clients is um you've survived abuse don't pick up where your abuser left off. Yeah. You know? That's and a great line. Thank you. Not, not a great line. It's a great thought process. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, and, and it's true though. And it's almost like this light bulb moment where we're like, wow, mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of am doing that, you know? And it's it's important to realize and, and I sometimes have to remind myself this on a daily basis, especially when things are um, tumultuous in my personal life, where I'm a human being. <laughs> I make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I get it wrong sometimes. Sometimes I, you know, break down. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I'm late. And I, you know, so, <laughs> so what? Like, yeah. 
that's not who I am. And it doesn't make me any better or worse. It's just a fact of life. Mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes we have these unrealistic expectations of ourselves. And Definitely. part of it, I think, is, you know, societal and part of our culture where we have to do, do, achieve, you know, meet this goal, surpass it, keep going. And, mm -hmm. and we're constantly dissatisfied. Yes. Yeah. To take on more. And just, just even as you're talking, right, it, it makes me think like the, even the words we use to describe ourselves, right, are so judgmental of ourselves. Right. Um, like how many times like I, I used to say it all the time, like, oh, my God, that was a stupid thing to do or what an idiot. Oh, you know, that repetitive negative loop that goes on in her head yeah. um, and it just it keeps our energy low right and it shows that we um there's more um work to be done on loving ourselves more right um even you know failure like there's there really is no such thing as failure right we've learned something new or there's ways to do things differently differently right so if we can take out some of the words that we use in our day-to-day -day description our day-to-day -day conversations we can reset the way we talk about ourselves right and reset the way we see things you know stress is about how we react to situations when we can learn to respond and we can respond by being more in the moment and being more mindful of who we are um, and mindful of where we're at and mindful of that that less judgment of ourselves um, but the other thing that you mentioned is um, is that and, and I it's a triangle and in the triangle you when you get stuck in the triangle you're a victim you're the persecutor or you're the enabler and it's um you know any one of those places is, is not a great place to be. So it, it's always, if you can see where you're at in the moment, then you can step out of that triangle. So if you're the victim, it's to see, actually see yourself considering yourself as a victim because so often we, we don't, right? We get so caught up in what's happened to us. And, um, you know, that victim mindset can really keep us down it's a sand and, trap it's yeah. like quicksand and you know all every all your attempts to get out sometimes are actually just sinking you deeper and deeper and a lot mm -hmm. of time actually we have a comment penny here is saying every morning i look in the mirror i tell myself i love you speak kindness you're special and positive mm -hmm. words that's a great practice um mm -hmm. a lot of it is what we feed ourselves too so what are you listening to who are who is around you um, you know, how are you treating yourself? So, and it doesn't have to be gluttonous. You know, I'm, I don't always have my nails manicured, but sometimes I'll get, you know, get them done or a haircut mm -hmm. or, you know, take a bubble bath. There's these lists of, of things that you can do to actively love yourself mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. I think, I don't want people to think that it's this cliche, right? No. You know, like yep. take a bath, go watch a movie, take a walk, call a friend, you know, get yourself a coffee. Um, there are these little messages that you send to yourself. I love you. You matter. You are valuable. You deserve this. You mm -hmm. earned this great job, you know. And the more we, the more we speak positivity to ourselves and self-love, mm -hmm. um, that I, I talk about the ripple effect a lot, but <laughs> it's true. It's so, true. Yeah. What's that? It, it is so true, right? And yeah. it is so important that that self love, right? So I'm going to be completely honest with you and show me. <laughs> oh my gosh! Actually, this is me tonight. I'm. All, <laughs> um, but so you got. Good for you. Like, you know, have a glass of wine, relax, do a show, you know. <laughs> it's so great because what's true and, and what Penny said there about her affirmations. So I've written a book too, and my book is called ha, um, The Magnificence of Magenta, Rediscovering the Color of Your Soul. I love in it. it. 
Um, I talk about one of the chapters I talk about, like one of the things is, is how to move on. And part of it is, is affirmations, right? We've got this file cabinet in our brain. It contains all these negative thoughts. And the way we remove those negative thoughts is to put new ones in. And positive ones, I am statements are amazing. Uh, statements that you repeat over and over again. And so we, there's only so much room in that file cabinet and you eventually push out the old thoughts and fill it up with all the new ones. So I love affirmations, stick them on your window, on your car, your phone, wherever, right? And have them pop up. And some of my clients have them pop up as a, on their timer, right on their phone all the time. So it's a great way to, to do that. And uh, um, start to rethink the way you talk to yourself and yes. affirmations can do that. I love that. I have them in my car, in the bathroom. Um, I have them on like, my coffee mugs are all positivity. They say yep. positive things and um, like girl power stuff. I have one with the uh, rosy mm -hmm. with the, you know, she's making the <laughs> flexing her muscle. But to me, <laughs> that reminds me like this is, this is time for me to, well, drink mm -hmm. coffee, obviously. And that makes me feel a little bit more like Rosie the Riveter. And I'm not sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it, 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 even that, like they have um, affirmation meditations that you can listen to and they're on YouTube, so they're free and they're eight hours long. You could listen, like your brain can listen to them while you're sleeping yeah. and yeah. you are training yourself. You're teaching yourself to think more positively, to think better about yourself. And it's amazing how our brains absorb this stuff while we're not even awake but it works oh yeah they're so plastic and and the other thing i'd really love to mention too is that it's okay sometimes to feel negative it's okay sometimes to feel down right yeah. this, this kind of new age guru kind of thing that you always have to be positive yeah yeah it's 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 bullshit sorry it's bullshit right yeah. um it's impossible and it's also ridiculous to think that. And also it's very, um, it'll create a lot of issues because if you're not allowing that stuff to come up and come out and examine it, then you're gonna push it down and yes. then it's gonna get stuck and then you're gonna have all kinds of issues, right? Um, it's not pretty. Oh no, like mental emotional manifest is physical. And years ago when I was working for the bank, right? And trying to be the perfect mother and the perfect employee and the perfect wife, I was overwhelmed. And I, I developed Graves disease, which is a hyperthyroid autoimmune condition. And everything in my body was in overdrive. And so that mental emotional manifest as this imbalance. And that happens to us all the time if we're not paying attention, which I wasn't doing. Now I know to listen to my body and do something about it, but I certainly didn't at the time. <laughs> so. Yeah. So we've got a couple people who are on um, listening and watching. I know Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I'm so excited about this. She's my new assistant. Oh, wonderful. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I, I am open about having PTSD and that makes many things uh, difficult for me. Things that most mm, people don't struggle with and and I do and I had to own that I had to face it head on and I had to make decisions in my life that would mitigate that um Penny saying she has sticky notes everywhere um, <laughs> it's so cute. but so we you know I I'm so happy and here Elizabeth said she wants to order your book so oh wonderful uh, thanks Elizabeth yeah <laughs> I'll give you the information after <laughs> yeah really Exactly. Well, you know, you can contact her because she's now my assistant. So just call my assistant, Joanna. All right. <laughs> nice to be able to say that. <laughs> I'll have my people talk to your people. I just want to be like, just, you know, just have my people call your people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still my person. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you know, if if PTSD is one of the things that makes you have to uh, have an assistant, then I'm not sure you want. <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, this was a really great show. I'm sorry that this, it's only uh, 30 minutes oh, long. Um, we're, we're, we're there. We did it. I don't know, Joanna. Um, you're such a great, you're such a great lady. I just, oh, I just you. love you and you're, uh, you are so wise. So own that girl. All um, right. Thank you. <laughs> do you have anything 
that you want to close with? Any last thoughts for this show tonight? I, I think the biggest thing, you know, we're all designed to heal ourselves. We've just forgotten how. Um, but you already have the tools inside of you that you need in order to heal yourself. And, and uh, I think I would encourage everyone to look inward rather than outward. You know, we all need people to guide us and teach us, but if they're not teaching you to go inward, then maybe find something else. But yeah, you've got all you need inside of you to be the best version of you. It's just being able to allow it and find it. Yes. So. I 100% agree. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us today with Real Talk Relationships That Speak Up and Empower. Um, this was just such a real treat, Joanna, and I have a feeling that we might have to do this again. So oh, I love you. I'm going to have you on mine. I just, I haven't changed the name of it yet, but it, I will by next week because it's going to start again next week. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I'm there. I am so there. Perfect. <laughs> thank you all for joining us thank you all for watching if you have any questions if you'd like to be on a show or if you have a show idea uh please message myself or obviously joanna um through speak up and empower or through our own personal pages uh if you have any if you're wondering more things about Speak Up and Empower, please visit www.speakupandempower.com. And thank you all for being here. Conversations. Thanks, that Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>